light. Mm -hmm. Shoot, I didn't mean for that to already go. Yeah, light. Light, yes, light. That's right. Yes, light. Mmm. Okay. Out. Out. Ready? E. And e. Good girl. Wow. Mm hmm. Yes, good job. E, good girl. E, yay. Good girl. Wow, good job. And She wants to do that. Yes, you know how. That's right. And, oh, good job. Push. Push. Wow, good job. Good job, Natalie. Let's try one more. Ooh. Ooh, that's right. Ooh. Wow, good job, light. So I'll start doing this vowel imitation exercise mm -hmm. more frequently. I do a sound like E, O, O, A, I. So it's, um, it's matching again, just like we're saying, a sound with a movement. And there's no meaning to it. So I just do it really quickly with something that's a quick reinforcer, like you get to put something in every time. And it's getting her again, just for that, to see the articulators and get some tactile cues that are associated with it for the vowels. Good job. So the two parts that we're doing, we're building a vocabulary for Natalie, but we're also trying to do some sound imitation with where those particular sounds are made. So when I do, so there's the tactile cues associated with the sounds, and then there's gestures associated with the words. So there's the language going on and the speech. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So with sound imitation, it's more important is the just get through it and do it frequently. But... <clears throat> it's not going uh, it's just move on from it whereas the language portion you can be infusing that through play the whole time 